seminar series, as you probably know, was designed to capitalise on the talent at all three of our institutions and draw in, as much as we can, the uh, astounding expertise of the Criminal Bar Association and in the future, hopefully, even more strongly, uh, solicitors' practice and the bench as well. Um, we are delighted, I say we, I'll explain that in a moment, we are delighted that you could all make it. It's a very great pleasure to see so many uh, known friends and some who I hope will be friends to us all in the future. I said we because this has been a community endeavour uh, from someone from each of those institutions. Uh, my name is Matt Dyson, as you may well know, some of you, uh, and I'm at Oxford. And uh, representing Cambridge, we have Finley Stark on the committee. Uh, representing UCL, we have Mark D'Souza, who's, there he is. And uh, representing the Criminal Bar Association, we have Paul Jarvis over here. The papers that you will be, you have before you, there is a two-page handout for each of the presentations. And there is also, in a couple of the cases, a full paper, um, which are to be treated as drafts, not to be circulated. Um, but the authors, I'm sure, would love any feedback in due course. Um, but what we will be talking, what each author will be talking to in the seminar itself, will be the handout, uh, not the full paper in detail. That would be too much for us to be able to uh, cope in one go. Uh, the rough format is 25 minutes for a speaker or so, and then five to 10 minutes for the commentator. And then there's a discussion amongst us all. Um, the point of the seminar is to really engage with each other and to talk about the issues that interest us. I would like to introduce to you our next speaker, who your name probably, probably, whose name is probably very familiar to you. Um, Andrew Ashworth has very kindly agreed to say a few words to open the seminar series for us, um, and so I'll give to him, Andrew. Well, thank you very much, Matt, and uh, my thanks go to the four people who have steered and structured this event and got this gathering of people together because it's our subject, criminal law, and we've got all these people in one room and I think that's a great achievement. So uh, four of you uh, have done very well to get, get it all together. Now the subject matter, as I understand it, is not just the criminal law narrowly. It's criminal law, criminal evidence, criminal procedure, even sentencing. It's a very broad uh, concept of criminal justice, perhaps. And the range of sources also is quite wide. Um, we all know about legislation, we all know about case law, but uh, we've also got to take note of things like the criminal procedure rules, a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, two new amendments this year already, to my knowledge, and I may have missed one. Um, and another peculiarity, definitive sentencing guidelines. Not sure what sort of law they are, but they exist and they bind. And again, we've got two um, new definitive guidelines in 2017 already. Uh, the one on reduction of sentence for guilty pleas and one on sentencing of uh, children and young persons. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of case law, I think still the most momentous happening of recent times is the decision in February last year in Jogi and Ruddock, the joint enterprise case. And there's plenty that we can say about that. The uh, historical analysis, uh, whether the doctrine is well-founded or not in theoretical terms, uh, judicial lawmaking issues, a whole range of matters, and some of them I think are going to be taken up by speakers today, a whole range of matters coming from that um, one decision. And, of course, that decision has a questionable effect on the people who are serving life imprisonment on the basis of conviction under the old doctrine of joint enterprise. So there are issues there as well, but rather important ones. Now, in addition to those issues, we can also take cognizance of the fact that in criminal law theory there is an ongoing debate about criminalisation. And you'll all be aware of the various writings on that. Um, does this mean that every new criminal law is sus suspect in some way? Well, I think the situation is much more complex than that and I would certainly be happy to defend some new laws, new criminal laws. I mean, if you think in recent years, we've had modern slavery, human trafficking, uh, coercion or controlling behaviour in the family. There are some, some significant offences there which I think 
um, we need to look at whether or not uh, the criminalization debate was there. But in terms of criminalization, I think we've got to look at it in two different ways. Particularly if we are alleging overcriminalization. Now, there's a lot that could be said about overcriminalization, but two forms I just want to mention to you. One is horizontal overcriminalization, the, the uh, addition of new criminal offences. I've mentioned three which I think are definitely worth keeping. There may be others where, which we don't think worth keeping, but horizontally the criminal law is being pushed out. But the other species of overcriminalization or criminalization is what you might call vertical where we are extending the criminal law to new grounds of responsibility and here one model is section 7 of the bribery act which as you know um, may, creates the offense of failure by a commercial organization to prevent bribery and that's now being looked at as a model for other new offences, such as um, failure by a commercial organisation to prevent fraud or um, to prevent money laundering or to prevent uh, various other forms of activity. So I could go on, um, that's one of the dangers of asking an old timer to uh, <laughs> open this, but instead I want now to um, having pointed out how vibrant I think the criminal law is and how right I think these uh, four organisers have been to call uh, this the cutting edge of criminal law because I think what the, the topics we've got today are at the cutting edge. I now give way um, to the next speaker and back to our chairman. Thank you.